Hi, I'm Dr. Rosemary Hyde, and I'm here to talk about um, our ongoing TOEFL uh, English preparation. This is a class, it's a series of classes. It's a program offered by Living Peace Now to provide for peacemakers on Living Peace Now the opportunity to learn and practice every day to perfect your English skills in reading, writing, speaking, and listening in no particular order. Um, so, and also vocabulary and pronunciation. So, you know, if you register on the site, livingpeacenow.org, it's free. And then follow the calendar. Um, each day, there will be one or more classes in English skills. And also, we have classes in self-development, in awareness, in building community, in learning how to find peace in your own life and in the lives of people around you and in your global community. That's what we're all about, is creating global friendships. Friendships across the world, across boundaries, across cultures, across languages. And as part of that, we are offering learning opportunities in English because so many people want to study abroad, want to become skilled users of the English language. And also, as we go along, we will create um, classes in for those who wish to boost their skill in French and in Spanish. So we do have a teacher, a spiritual teacher, in French, and his name is Mojo. Uh, that's what his nickname for Living Peace now. And he's a magician, and he presents in French. So he's presenting on the magic that we can accomplish in our lives and in the world by being aware of possibilities and being brave and courageous in taking them up. Um, we have several teachers in English, as I said, and on the calendar, if you follow the LP Now calendar, you'll find on different days, different English classes with different teachers, but they're all coordinated uh, based on the um, preparation opportunities that the TOEFL exam offers to anybody with a intermediate, advanced intermediate comprehension of English or more. Um, we are, we will welcome volunteers, people who wish to teach, people who are interested in helping us to organize and stay organized, which doesn't happen just without paying any attention to it, as you may realize. Um, and we welcome participants and we welcome people who are willing to support us financially with with a small monthly donation or a gift that comes from your heart in your gratitude um, in exchange for the education, for the community, for the friendship, for the joy that you experience in participating in our activities. Find a donate button and exchange some energy with us. We will very much 
appreciate your help. So right now, I want to share my screen and share with you what the homework is for this coming week, the week of December 1st to December 7th. We figure that if you spend 30 to 60 minutes on many days taking a class in English and 30 to 60 minutes in homework on other days, shorter time on class days, practicing, 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 that's what it's all about, um, that you will experience your skills improving without you, you know, you realize that, oh, it's happening. It's just happening because I'm using English. I'm immersing myself in English. I'm reading English. I'm discussing in English. I'm listening to English. I'm writing in English. So we are using preparation materials from TOEFL um, and teaching test-taking skills and time management and uh, the skills that are involved in scoring higher in a standardized test, as well as the language skills on which the test is based. So I'm going to share my screen. Here is the homework for this week. It will be in the TOEFL WhatsApp chat for Living Peace Now. And if you contact, if you register on the site and then contact using the contact link and say, I just registered, I want to be in the TOEFL class, please add me, invite me to the WhatsApp discussion group uh, will invite you and you will be a part of the discussion and the uh, comments and the suggestions and the sharing of other students and of your instructors. Okay, so we have every week, we have 20 vocabulary words and we will also start um, in, including every second or third week, a list of expressions, of sayings, because English is very focused on using expressions. Expressions are a very, very important part of vocabulary for using English. <coughs> So let's, <coughs> there are <coughs> a lot of skills. You can make each one of these words turn into four or five different words. So instead of 20 words this week, you're going to learn 100 words. If you know how to expand each one and to include the related words that are different parts of speech from the basic vocabulary words given here. For instance, let's take the word intervene, number nine. It, one of the skills that we will always give you with the words that are susceptible to it are how to break the word down into its component, what we call roots. Words are often created in English by combining root, a root word with a prefix, sometimes a suffix, but often a prefix, to create words with a different reference, a different meaning, a uh, different part of speech. And so the word intervene. Okay, I want to look up intervene. It means to, to 
step into a situation and change its course. So for instance, if you've got a group planning a party and you see um, a way in which that party could be made better, you can intervene in the discussion and give them a better idea. In the book, the uh, I'm, I'm taking these lists from a TOEFL preparation book. Um, intervene, the definition they give is to become involved in a situation, to interfere, which sometimes is a negative uh, idea, interference, but it means to change the outcome. Um, so the exa example sentence they give is, a fight, fight broke out during the school dance, but the chaperones were able to intervene before anybody got hurt. They stepped in the middle, inter. Inter as a prefix means, it's from Latin, and it means in the middle, between. And vin is a root word that comes from the Latin. Let me find that for you. Okay, so the Latin verb venire, the French verb venir, come, to come, intervene, to come between. Okay, what other words might uh, be created? Intervene as a verb, but uh, you could have. You could make a noun out of it. And the way to make a noun out of a verb that's based on venir is to turn it into vention. So intervention is the noun, which means the act of coming between, of getting between the people involved in a situation and changing the outcome. Now, sometimes venir is combined with other prefixes. For instance, convene uses the preposition in Latin, con, which means together. So with the vin from come and convene, what does con to convene mean? It's also a verb. If you said to come together, you're right. You call together a group. You convene them. And when you make a noun out of it, what does it become? Using the same principle that when you made intervene, intervention, convene, in the noun form, you are attending a coming together, a, yes, a convention. So those are different words that intervene, gives us access to, reminds us of, and you could say is related to. So intervene to come between, intervention, coming between, Intervener, the person that comes between. Uh, convene, to call together. Um, to bring together. Convention, a bringing, coming together. Uh, convener, the person that brings people together, that tells people to come together. Uh, we also have... Um, there's an adjective, conventional, adding the adjective ending, 
onto convention, conventional. And the word is, I mean, I'm reminded of that word, but let me find if that indeed has the same root. Yes, if it relates to a coming together and it has a whole new meaning, which means, which is that when you have a conventional idea, it means that it is an idea that people have come together about and it's an agreed upon idea. It's a an idea that nobody's going to object to because it follows social norms. So there you go. Intervene, intervener, intervention. Convene, convener, convention, conventional. It's a lot of different words with intervene. Now, it strikes me the word number three, invent, strikes me that they may be related words, right? Vent, vention, invention, intervene, intervention. So I'm going to look up invent. And just out of curiosity, see if by any chance it has the same origin. Yep. To come into, to come invent, to come upon. Um, so the prefix in, in this case, um, is in um, and vention coming upon. So when you invent something, you make it up from scratch. You invent it. Um, I don't. I don't have another word coming to me. But invent means to make up to come upon an idea, to create a new idea. So those words are somewhat related and you can learn them together. And then we have another word that ends in ENT on this list, to implement. Hmm, I'm curious and Going to look that one up too. Often, when you look up a word in an English dictionary, and this is true in French too, I know, you can find what is the origin of the word. And there we don't have ven, we don't have the word to come. So, implement. Impla means to fill up, and the uh, ment is just a noun form. So implement means to um, to create to um, to. It's really closely involved in this meaning to invent to implement a solution, to implement an idea means to fill it up, make it happen. Um, and there, it's also a noun, implement, which means a tool. A tool for making something happen is an implement. That's one word for tool. Um, and so to fulfill, to perform 
to, um, as a verb, to make something happen, to implement or an implement a tool. It doesn't matter how you play with these words. This is, I'm just telling you one way that also helps you if you learn the roots, the roots that English has glommed onto, has taken and turned into a bunch of different words by changing the prefix or the suffix. The suffix is the end element. The prefix is the, the element that precedes the root. So if, if you see roots that you recognize, then you can interpret the, the prefix, what it means, and you've got a whole new word. So these are, this is how to approach these vocabulary lists. Play with them. Play around with the word. Play with using it in different sentences. Play with creating new words with it, with using it as different parts of speech and with joining it with other similar words that have historically come from the same root. Um, so that's a little bit of how to you know, study the vocabulary lists. By the time you are done, do it in writing, do it in speaking, um, and look things up. Get involved with the word in play so that it becomes part of what's already in your brain. It becomes a friend. It allows you to expand what you can express in English. So just look at, for instance, the word at number 20, reject. Okay, so do you see any other words in this list that use the prefix re? I see a couple. I see require and respond and reveal. Hmm. Well, so that makes me wonder, okay, what does re? mean, R-E. And again, it's a Latin root, a Latin word, a Latin preposition, really. And it means back, to back, back. And if you go backwards, then you would have to do something again. So that's another meaning of re, back or again. So then what you need to do is look at the root that re is used with. And the number 20, the one we, we started with, the root is ject. Can you think of any other words that have ject in them? Well, I can think of inject, so the in, into, ject. Um, I can think of intro, ject, which means into, within, interject, which means between, to ject between, um, interject, interject, project or project as a noun. Project is the verb. Forward, to ject forward. Okay, so those pieces of words are put onto the root ject. So look up the origin of any one of those words. I'm going to look up the origin of reject. And ject means 
to throw. It comes from the Latin verb uh, I don't know how to, how there's several different pronunciations in Latin for the J. So, re back, gichere, which means to throw, ject, is the noun form. And then it went back into the verb form. So, reject means to throw back. So, what do you do when you reject an idea? or reject a gift, or reject a plan. What are you doing? You are throwing it away, throwing it back. You're saying no to it. You're dismissing it. You're refusing it. So... If, for instance, you're thinking about an idea, do you accept? Accept comes from the word in Latin that means to take. And ac is add to. So take to, accept, to like something, or to reject it, to throw it back, which means to refuse it. So you have a rejection letter, it's an adjective. A letter that tells you you have been refused. A rejection means you are refused. Um, Okay, so rejected also means refused. So, just taking that word ject, throw, we have inject, to throw in, to put in the middle of a sentence, to interrupt and um, say something, to inject an idea into a conversation. You have project, throw forward. In other words, you're thinking into the future. You are projecting your idea out into. Um, Interject is kind of like inject, but inject is also physical. It could be like a, a syringe, a needle that injects the vaccine, for instance, into your arm. That's an injection, a throwing in. Um, Abject is from, away from, and it means it kind of has a down meaning too. So abject poverty means the lowest poverty. Um, deject to throw down. So if you are dejected, it means you're sad. Wow, that word ject. And those uh, prefixes, you can have great fun with them. So respond, another word that starts with re, with back. Let's find it. So what we need to find there is the root spond. And again, it's from Latin and Old French. And uh, spond, spondere in Latin, is to promise, so to pledge. So to respond is to pledge back, to answer, to respond. And the other one is reveal. So we know the direction back is part of that. And the word, the root that we want is veal. And the French word is valoir. Um, And the um, 
reveal means to to see, to have opened up something. So show, um, unveil, um, So valoir means to stand out. Reveal means to show back, to reflect, to um, to make obvious, to explain, to reveal. So I didn't know where we were going to dinner tonight, but my partner just revealed the surprise to me, told me where we were going. So. Um, solve, word number eight. You can put different prefixes on it to make different words. Resolve. Zo solve comes from uh, dissolve. Solve means to find the answer to a problem. Um, dissolve means to um, dissipate in a liquid. So you put a tablet into a glass of water and it dissolves. And the root there is solution, solvere to untangle, to melt out, to fade out, to disintegrate. And that's dissolve, to melt, to disintegrate. So solve, to lose its integrity, dis, to, um, to become everywhere. Um, so it could be a fade or a transition. Um, and again, it's from Latin, dissolvere. Resolve to bring something together again. It means to come to a decision to, and it can also mean to separate into its parts or to disintegrate, um, to convert something, to settle or determine, to deal with. Um, to make up your mind. And again, it comes from Latin, re, uh, to a back, and solve to melt, to melt back. So anyway, those are a few of list three words. As you study the others, Think about uh, the prefixes and the roots. Para, dox, I expect comes from Greek um, and means opposites. Um, create comes from Latin uh, and it's the French verb créer, to bring about. Uh, enhance has, has a prefix and a root. Hands and N. Uh, accelerate. The ac is to, the prefix to in Latin. And sel has something to do with speed. Pedestrian. The word ped is a prefix coming from foot. Commemorate. Memorate. Memor has the, the memory root in it. And come to remember with, con. Um, 
imply, that's an interesting one, might have the uh, prefix in, and then you've got to figure out what the root ply is. And same thing with require. Choir is uh, from the root of a quest, question, and re back. It, it means to need. And you have to figure out how that root and prefix work together. So have fun, play with, share with each other, make up sentences. The more things you do with each word, the more familiar you become with it. And then the more likely it is that you will be able to use it. So practice putting it in sentences that with specific meanings. Listening, the, the, there are basic skills of, there's two types of skills. There's listening and reading, which are called passive language. They are about receiving ideas that are expressed in language. That's another comp composite word, composite together with express, to press out, to um, well, exprimer, <laughs> to, <laughs> I'll have to look it up in the dictionary to give you English words for it. Um, so again, the more practice you have and the more you pay attention to understanding, what you read and what you hear, the better your active language skills become. The bigger your passive vocabulary is, the more words you can command when you want to say something or write something. The more words you have in your head and the more words you can actually use. So all fluency comes from listening and reading. So it's very important to practice these things, to do them regularly. Writing, uh, and I gave you here a, a question, a type of question that you will get in the TOEFL test. And I told you here, A, B, C, D, E, F, what you will be scored on when you write an answer to a question. And the question I'm asking here, what changes do you predict for over the next century? Well, you could write an encyclopedia on that subject when you think about it, because it means changes in any area of life or of awareness. So the first thing you need to do is narrow it down. Think about one aspect of living and then narrow it down some more to one sentence, one thesis, one proposition that you can illustrate in two or three points. Um, that is the big challenge with these questions is narrow it down so that your essay can be fully explained in a short number of words in what you would say in two or three minutes to explain a point completely. I mean, it's really, yeah, it's like two or three minutes, less than five minutes of speaking. So, you know, you really got to practice narrowing ideas down to something that you're familiar with and you can say something about, that's the other important aspect, is to get an idea quickly, 
because you only have a half an hour to write the whole thing. And uh, it will take practice to get there. So I'm telling you the first challenge is narrow it down. That's what I'm going to score you on. When I look at the paragraph that you have written by next Wednesday, by December 7th. And finally, reading. Not finally, but the next one, reading. Um, it's the reading on the test will be the kind of reading you will find in university textbooks. So it's not easy reading. It's challenging reading. And it's got a lot of words that were created from Latin. <laughs> um, so the better you learn the Latin prefixes and the Latin roots, the better chance you will have to understand Latin-based words, composite words that you have not encountered before. That's one of the important reading and listening skills is figuring out from what you see what the person meant. And if you know something about the origins of words, the Latin roots, the German roots, um, the better skills you will have at doing that. So um, this is an exercise in reading a text, an appropriately challenging text, and answering the kinds of questions that the TOEFL test will give you on a reading selection. So the uh, online resource that you are pointed to here, which I've asked Abu to post on the WhatsApp chat, so you can just click and go there, um, will give you the opportunity to take the test, practice, and then answer, score yourselves, because all the answers will be given at the end. And then figure out, okay, what's my score? What do I need to learn to do better, to score better? And we can discuss this when we discuss your results. And speaking, that's what our discussion classes provide you with opportunities to do. Uh, Sabrina, Laurel, Syed, and I are doing metaphysical self-development discussions where, you know, people get to share freely what their thoughts are and you get to respond. And that's an important skill for the TOEFL test. They will rate you on your pronunciation on your, you know, the, the sound of what you're producing and the accuracy of the vocabulary and the grammar that you're using. And the best way to practice that is to participate in a lot of conversation and really say something that relates to the discussion. Um, and finally, just collect articles and books in English, nonfiction ones that tell you new information. And I've listed here the books that we are using right now in our discussions on Living Peace Now and the book that we are will begin using in January and February. Really interesting books that will expand everybody's awareness of topics related to peacemaking. Okay, so that's your homework for the week of December 1st to 2nd. Um, I envision you participating with other students on WhatsApp, on the TOEFL chat, the LP Now TOEFL chat, with these assignments, and also participating with our language teachers, Sabrina, Laurel, Syed, and I, and possibly Abu. Okay, 
look forward to seeing you next Wednesday.